Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today it's a big day for me because it is the seven year anniversary of my debut novel. So I wanted to spend some time today talking about this book, my career as a writer, my writing journey over the past seven years. And just honestly, what is the future for this book? Beauty and the Breakdown is what I've always described as a 1975 music video interpretation of Bonnie and Clyde. And I think that comparison still kind of stands up, even though... A big part of this book are these teens who basically run away from home and accidentally join a gang. I will insert one of my favourite Tumblr posts here that says, Love being 12 years old and making an OC and saying, yeah, they're a hardened criminal, they're deeply involved in crime, they're in a gang. And never elaborating on that because I didn't know how crime worked. This is still my approach. And yes, this is still my approach. So let's start at the start for this book. And that text post will become very relevant as this video progresses. Okay, this is a proof copy because I don't think I own any of like the original copies anymore and this is close enough. Beauty and the Breakdown was published the week before my 16th birthday. So I was 15 years old. I'd finished writing this book in the summer before so I would have been like just turned 15, 15 and a half kind of thing. And I wrote this book on a website called Mavellas which is largely known at the time for being a fan fiction site. I won some awards. What did they actually win for this? I won trailer of the year because I made a trailer for this book out of music video clips, which I might actually link in the description because I still think it's quite fun. And then I won new Mavellian of the year because this was like my breakout into the fanfiction site, which I think is notable because it's not really a fanfiction. In a sense, it is an amalgamation of the 1975 Robbers music video, the Mario's Trench by Now music video, Bonnie and Clyde in a very abstract sense of I haven't even read the wiki page, I just know like, you know, the Tumblr aesthetic, and the song Beauty and the Breakdown by the scene aesthetic. So this came out sometime late February 2017, and I believe I started writing it based off the date in the first book. I started writing it on Thursday the 23rd of October. Which year? Can't remember anymore. Probably, it might have been 2016, it might have been 2015, but I wrote the bulk of this book 15 and earlier. I'm just admiring how small and how naive this book feels to me in a sense, as someone who kind of has a grasp on self-publishing now. All I knew at the time was um, Amazon KDP. Originally, back in the day, there was KDP, which was exclusively for Kindle ebooks, and there was Create Space, which did books. It also made like CDs and DVDs at the time. So this one, the, the ISBN for it, is still registered to Amazon Create Space rather than KDP or just independently published. So that's how old this is in terms of like, what's going on with self-publishing right now? And I published it on Amazon. I just, I uploaded it and I submitted it. And then I just went about my life. I think some of my friends, I used to have a lot of friends who we would sit there in our IT lessons refreshing novellas, looking at my stats go up as I finished this book. I finished it officially on my friend's birthday. I have a thing on my Snapchat memories that comes up every year. Nothing actually about her, just this book apparently. And then my IT teacher caught wind of like, oh, what are you guys looking at? And they're like, oh my god, I wrote a book. Then my teachers found out I wrote a book. There's something I don't think I have anymore, but I had to go into like my head teacher's office and take a photo with him holding this book that I don't think I actually want to have. But they're like, wow, our student's done something, let's celebrate. And then I have my, my, my memory box here. I've done a video about this years ago. <laughs> Could be up to seven years ago now talking about this. Let's go through something. There's a bunch of like cards from various family members saying like, congrats on getting published. And I don't think I knew how to break a term at the time that traditional publishing and self-publishing are different things. And I don't think they care because no one's mentioned this in seven years. And then my parents got in contact with like our town newspaper and this this little slight article was published. It's a, again a very horrific photo of me age, age 16 just looking so awkward because I didn't, I didn't want this in a sense. And as well, and then it's like, wow, self-publishing. Because I was at a very, I was at a point in this where like everyone was self-publishing back in the day. Me, self-publishing was not special to me, or important, or exciting, or newsworthy. The actual article, mostly the reporter person, just said, "Hey, email me what you have to say about this book," and I did. And then they kind of wrote an intro paragraph, and this exists. Other fun things in this box are the CD I made with the original Mavella's cover and the original track list for the book, because book playlist, the CD fell out. 
the book playlist was like a kind of fun thing to do back then. Like, it's very big fan fiction site energy. And I was obsessed with these CDs that kind of looked like vinyl. And then when I finished secondary school, um, my English teacher, who was like my form teacher for the entire five years, and was my English teacher for at least four of those years, like, wrote a cute little card saying that she's looking forward to my next novel, and that my determination and passion for writing inspired her, and I think about this near daily, and that's potentially the only reason I finished my next book. So yeah, that's in the memory box. This book came out, I formatted it entirely in Microsoft Word, I think the energy's strong. I downloaded one of like, the pre-made um, Amazon templates for books, and I just copy and pasted my text in. It's oh, horrible to look at, just because I, kn I know what I can do now, and even back then I was someone who read a lot of books and I still didn't get the book to look right. And the cover of this was a pre-made cover I found for maybe like £35 on some random vaguely dodgy website by someone, it was literadesigns.com, which I think the website's now gone because I look for them often. And I fell in love with this one, I think the original title was called Summer in the Valley or something, so it like worked out for spacing, and I thought, yeah, I saw this and I thought, wow, that's my characters. And then we're gonna move on to like a finished copy of this book, so I'd have to keep showing you this one. This one's slightly annotated. So yeah, it had like a, it had a full wraparound cover, so it was £35 just for the cover and you paid a little extra to get the full front and back. But I still think pre-made covers are such a great resource for indie authors, because some of them are beautiful, some of them are better than published book covers, and I'm still very fond of this cover. Does it say anything about the book? I don't think so. I think it gives it more like a summer romancy vibe than um, hardened criminal, but I do still love it. And I love the green, and that's just what started to represent this book. So moving on to this edition. This is not the f a first edition in a sense. So the first edition was like small and skinny. It's like 250 pages like this one. This is one where I sat down one day, you can tell because it's got like an early version of the Little Oaks Independent Publishing logo on here. This was a later version where I sat down and I thought, you know, I kind of know how to format books now because I was working on Paper Forest formatting at the time, and I thought I'm going to redo this one as like practice for the next one. So you open it up and it's actually got like, it's got the double title page thing that you're supposed to have, and the copyright page actually looks vaguely real. And the it's, this one's got a content warning page. And this is actually the version that's currently available to buy. But you get into it and I, this is why I started this like black page between chapters and nice chapter headers and then actually including, you know, the font from the cover instead of just Garamond. And this font I use in here I believe is Palatina Lana type, which is like my favourite <laughs> my favourite book font. So just the difference between these two is so... I also removed like the subtitle thing because I just it didn't like it anymore because I thought, you know, half the subtitle is just also the title. But just the jump from these two and me learning how to formatting was just such a good experience for me. This one I don't believe was formatted, I think this one was still formatted in Microsoft Word, because I know the first version of Paper Forest was also done in Word, and I didn't use InDesign until the start of 2023. So they're not bad for a girl with no talent. And I know as I was going through reformatting this book, I thought, you know, I finally, I'm making progress. So the first thing I would change about this book is actually formatted like a book. I sat through and I thought, you know, I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing with writing now, and as I was going through, I did a very light edit of fixing typos. Not fun story. When my both my parents had first read this book, it was a big deal when it came out, but the only feedback I've ever received from any of them, like no comments about plot or character or writing style or even like praise of congrats, you did it. The only thing my parents had ever said was they called me downstairs every chapter or so to point out typos. So this book there's hopefully le less typos than this one, but I always have slight a bitter feeling as I search through and I was like, wow, my parents have no thoughts on my writing career other than, here's a mistake you made. Which could be a metaphor for something. So I was going through this one, I did a very light edit where I thought, you know, I'm gonna try and get more of the typos gone, there are still many there, I'm sure. But I went through and I got rid of more typos and inevitably created more typos, and I thought, you know, one day I would like to go through and do a full redo of this book, I'd like to add in extra scenes and develop the plot more. And as I said, um, make the hardened criminals actually make sense, because there's not necessarily plot holes in this book, there's just like vaguely nonsense of just... I was f 15 maximum at the time, and I just simply did not have the life experience to be writing this book, which I think is the big thing that I would change. <laughs> it's just get older. 
So I would love to go through one day and rewrite this as I did for Paper Forest, add in extra scenes, make it more coherent and up to date with my current writing style, as I am seven years older now. And I think my original dream for this book was for it to be a duology. Because I want this to have like a bittersweet, heartbreaking beginning and an eventual happy ending. And I would love to have this be a duology. So I think by the time I finally have the brain space to start writing the sequel is when I'll go through and make like the special edition in the sense of this one and fix it and make it the book of my heart again. I wish I had more to say in terms of stats for this one because I did my indie wrapped video at the end of 2023 talking about mostly Paper Forest because that's my book that came out. But this one, I submitted it for a Goodreads giveaway because they were still free back in 2016. So it's got 430 TBR or shelves or ads, I believe. It has, I think, like 12 ratings and 7 reviews, and I know that it has not changed except by one review in probably the entire 7 years. Which is, you know, vaguely disheartening in a sense, but again, I did not know how to promote or market a book or use social media or like competitions or awards or anything back then. So again, another thing I would change about this book is just probably spend an infinite more amount of time researching it the book itself and then just publishing in general and also the landscape of self-publishing has changed so much even in five years two years let alone seven to ten one day i will give this book a chance to actually have its own life outside of novellas where it was actually pretty popular and i'd love to prove it to you except the website has now been taken down by ai so i can't look at any of my old writing which is very sad but I'd love to give this book a chance one day because I believe it has potential and just to do my teenage self justice in a sense. I think we should go through like a brief look through the editions of this book and then I'll talk to you about the one big thing I would change. Like the one thing that vaguely makes me resent this book slightly. First edition, ebook edition, do not have that available to show. Next edition, this is just the Amazon paperback. I believe Amazon was the main place I published this one, so it's pretty much exclusively available on there. New paperback edition. The old paperback edition, not available anymore. You only have the slightly thicker, nice, this one with the grey pages and the content warnings. And is the playlist still in here? <gasps> no, it is. It is. This one here. It's got the track list with a Spotify code. That's how vintage this is. So, paperback edition. We have the Amazon hardback edition, because Amazon is just case laminate, there's no dust jackets, and I quite like this. My new copy of the new Solitaire by Alice Oseman hardback came today, and it's got no dust jacket, and I really love it. This one is the exact same interior. It's the exact same mix. It's almost the exact same exterior. It's just formatted to be a hardback. And I am very fond of case laminate hardbacks. We also have a dust jacket hardback. This is printed and I believe it might still be distributed by Lulu unless I just deleted my account. Because Lulu, um, you have to make books very expensive, very little profit. But I was, this is a point where this was probably in the past three years more than anything. Oh, it's got the Little Oaks logo on it, so it would have been my third year of uni. And this is where I was starting to learn more, because I knew Paper Forest was going to be coming out at some point. I just had to work out how. So it's like, you know, I know I want a book to have multiple editions because obviously great for the ego. You want ebook, you want paperback, you want hardcover. So I was dabbling into places that did hardcovers with dust jackets because Amazon did not. I spent a lot of time photoshopping and um, the content aware filter on Photoshop just to get the back off to make these flaps. And I'm quite proud of the design of this dust jacket. I'm not sure if I legally was actually allowed to do that as the cover designer's website has disappeared. But obviously it just looks so bad. But this here, this might still be available for sale. I think I also dabbled in the Barnes & Noble self-publishing um, B&M Press for a while. So somewhere in the world there might be like Barnes & Noble exclusive versions of this. Pretty much the same cover, but it's got like a purple cityscape image instead, which I still love that image so much. But I don't own that because they don't ship outside of the US. So there might be more secret editions of this book. So overall there's just infinite editions. I think there's also a paperback published through Lulu. There might be some published through Draft Digital, there's some published through Bean and Press, just because I simply had no idea what I was doing in terms of distribution for this book. And now that Ingram Spark has removed its setup fees, I now have access to expand distribution and hardbacks that are a lot more exciting than this one. So again, another thing I have learned in the past seven years is mostly to be patient. This book was such a state when it came out in like, you know, full of typos, unfinished cover, terrific interior formatting. 
because I was just not patient with this book existing. I, again, I said I was 15 when it came out. It was the week before my 16th birthday, and I think that's a lot of pressure for me, especially looking at all the young, successful authors out in the world, to do something worthwhile with my life while I was still young and it was still exciting for me to do important things. So I thought, you know, I have a literally just a first draft of this book is what the, the published version is, not even like a second or a third or edited. I think it's literally just the first draft. I finished it writing, I furiously up uploaded chapters to Mavella's the second I finished writing, because there was such a rush for it to be done. And then after there was the rush for it to be done, there was a rush for it to be published, I'd be like, yeah, I published a book while I was still 15, because apparently 16 was like a big scary, oh, I'm getting old kind of age for me back then. And now I'm approaching 23 and I still feel so, so young and clueless, and like, I'm not ready to have a life. And now I remember being 15 and thinking I was running out of time to be successful. So that is the one biggest thing that I don't like. It's not even stuff I don't like about the book. It's about my mindset and the pressure of being young and successful. And now I have Nothing New by Taylor Swift and I calm those fears a little bit. But it's just, I look at it and I think this book could have had so much potential. And I think I was a pretty good writer for 15. But every time some of my friends say they want to pick up and read this book, I feel like a sense of dread that I have this out in the world and it's not perfect or good. I think it is good, but I say good with a question mark. And anytime someone picks it up to read it, I say, go ahead, but be beware. I was a child when I wrote this. So I feel like I need to give some kind of disclaimer that maybe I'm, I'm allowed to be less than perfect sometimes. And I think I will make the special edition one day, again, because I want the duology to finish the story that I have in my head. It, I don't think it necessarily needs a duology, I think it does work as standalone. But for me, I want to give something a happy ending for once. And I want to do this justice and like an apology for my 15 year old self for that pressure of has to be perfect, have to be young and relevant, have to get in the newspaper and have photos with my head teacher. And I think my IT teacher even like posted about it on Twitter and things like that. And I'm generally so grateful for the support of mostly the adults in my life back then. But again, I do think it was a case of, wow, this child is young and successful. So I think all like the newspaper thing, they make a point of saying my age and they say young writer and things like that. And now, am I still a young writer? Yes, I'm baby. I'm just, I'm baby. I, I start to hate that meme. But I'm, I'm still young. I have time. I'm not running out of time. If it takes me another five years to write the next book, that's perfectly okay. And I think that is all I have to say about my baby, my firstborn who I've neglected for the past seven years. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sorry it ended on kind of a sad note, but I think I would love to talk about this book more in the future, in a place where I'm hopefully happier with it and more accepting of my child. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!